give the the audience some context. How long have you actually been selling real estate? Because you're you're pretty much new to this thing. So um, I'm based in Austin, Texas, and I have been a real estate agent for all of three months. So at, as of this recording date, it's November 21st. I went back and checked. I became an official practicing legal agent in the state of Texas on Friday, August 4th. So wow. it's just barely three months. Interesting. So, you know, I've got, I really want to unpack that because I think a lot of people have questions about, you know, should I get into real estate? What is it actually like? You've been doing this now for 90 days. And, and how long have you and I been working together? Have, did, did you join our coaching program like right out of the gate or did you try a couple things when you got licensed? Yeah, I mean, when I first joined, I guess I kind of relied on my brokerage to sort of give give me a little bit of guidance. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who can identify with this. It's, yeah, well, you know, just work your current friends and family and uh, eventually they'll come around and they'll want to buy from you. Just let everyone you know know. The problem I'm running into is that I just moved to Texas last year from Raleigh, North Carolina. So I don't, and I, I moved here on a whim. So I don't know. I don't really know anyone outside of my church uh, mm. out here. Um, so that was the first problem I ran into. Then they, then they were like, well, you know, just wait for buyers to, to come around or start renting out units and you can make a little bit of short-term change that way. And I'm just like, S sitting around and waiting on my hands is not the way I operate. Um, so I actually found you on YouTube uh, you know, I was actually, I, I knew that I could do some cold calling that's in my background, which we may get into later, but I, I was going to do some cold calling. And so I was looking up good dialers and stuff. And I stumbled on one of your videos about Vulcan seven. And I was mm -hmm. like, Oh, this guy, he seems kind of smart. You know, I'll see what his other videos say. And I was like, wow, this guy's actually really smart. Let me, let me see what happens. And then, you know, I actually, I booked a coaching consultation call just to kind of see what the ins and outs of the program were. And I was like, I mean, after having a consultation, I was like, I just need to do this. Like, this is going to be a better investment in my business if I just do it, do it now. So I guess to answer that, I, about a month after I became an agent is when I joined the program. So we, yeah. So right out of the gate and, and this, if I could, if I could choose, that's, that's how I, I, I would, I, that's, I love working with agents when they're fresh into the business so that we can get in front of, you know, all the bad habits that I think a lot of agents, uh, uh get over time. So you know, and not to take anything away from your broker or anybody's broker, but that's just traditionally the advice. It's just a, hey, go work your sphere of influence, do social media and wait. And for people that um, need to make money, it doesn't work that well, right? So what is it, first off, you know, when you got into the business, what was your thought process and how you were going to acquire clients in the beginning? Well, so I guess a little bit of, a little bit of my background is that I actually started out as a real estate investor about four years ago. Um, and the way that I acquired a lot of my rental property was through cold calling absentee homeowners. And you know they were out of state and such, and you know maybe they bought a property 20, 30 years ago, they let it go, um, and they just didn't want to deal with it anymore. So I was like, well, when I was you know working on my investing side of things, I was cold calling a lot. I'm just going to do the same thing. Um, and so that was kind of, that was kind of my thought process there, but then just come to find out, Hey, it turns out, you know, sell or buying properties for investment purposes and then selling, you know, buying at a discount versus selling at a premium price are pretty different. Um, and so that's, that's kind of what led me to, I was like, okay, if I'm, if I'm really going to get into this as a career, I really need, uh, I really just kind of need some coaching, you know, can, can I get to my end goal? Like, can I learn all the lessons without the scars? Can I, mm. can I accomplish that? And so I said, yeah. when, you know, when I went, when I found out about your program and everything, it was kind of a no brainer to at least take a shot with it. Yeah. So what, uh, I'm curious, you know, what, uh, we've not actually not had that conversation. What, what happened or how did you make the decision that you decided you wanted to sell real estate as a career versus staying on the investment side? Because there's a lot of overlap, right? But I'm curious for you, what was it that said, I want to be on, on this side of the business? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess for me, it's like if you, the appeal for 
real estate or just any kind of investing in general is people think passive income. Like that's that's the appeal of it. But for me, like just having passive income and sitting on a beach and you know do you know you do like I I just I just don't operate that way. Like I it, it would be it's nice to have passive income. Believe me, it's very nice to have that. But at the same time, it's boring. Like and so I. Like I, I'm just not that way. So you have your active income and you have your passive income, but you can't really get passive income unless you get active income and send it into passive income. That's right. Um, you know, I mean, of course, you can buy property with, you know, little to no money. Um, but you know, I, I just, I, I just, I don't like sitting on my hands. Um, so I guess what, what led me to this, what the lead up was to all this is, I actually got, I've been selling software for years and years. And for me, you know, I, I just, I, I didn't want to, I, I got, I got laid off at the end of June. And the last thing I wanted to do was go back to a W2 job and put the golden handcuffs back on, um, you know, which, I mean, I guess, you know, having a W2 job for me, it didn't really, doesn't really sound all that bad because, you know, I, this is not like a, a may sound like a brag to some people out there, but it was never like a financial thing for me to join this program or to get into real estate because I was making about two hundred thousand dollars a year selling software. You know, I'd stored it away into passive income assets and all those things. And so, you know, like on the financial side of things, like I'm good. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right. Like I sure. didn't, I didn't don't become a realtor because I thought that there was like you can make so much much money doing this. It was just that I love real estate. That's that's really what it is. I I love real estate. So I wanted to be in this industry. I hate being told what to do. So I didn't want to go get another W-2 job. And I'm just a very, very high achievement oriented type person. So just sitting on my hands and doing nothing, you know, just living off my passive income was not something that I wanted to do. Um, and I, I know that to be true. I, you know, I didn't want to go back to a W-2 job and I didn't want to sit on my hands and do nothing because I know that I'd be miserable doing that like even when i was making really good money selling software i was just i was absolutely miserable doing that um and so i was like i even if i take a massive pay cut i'd rather be doing this to where i'm you know making a lot you know making my money through something that i actually am passionate about and enjoy doing and something that's like my own yeah you know? so totally makes that's sense what kind of led me up to here yeah it, now knowing that knowing your personality, all of what you just said makes a lot of sense. Like the, 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 the fact that you have such self-awareness is incredible around just not being fulfilled with the work that you did in the past. Um, and now being a business owner, which is what we are as real estate, uh, uh, salespeople, right? So let's talk about the beginning. Let's, let's break down your business now. So you've been doing this, like we said, for about 90 days in the beginning, I think that um, I wouldn't call it a disconnect, but I think when you are learning like my sales methodology, because you have so much sales background, I wouldn't, w would you say that you questioned it or, or was it just didn't, it didn't click right away. I, I remember vividly a conversation we had right when you joined and I want to talk about that and then how you're using the reverse selling methodology today and, and what, how you, uh, have adopted this approach to selling because you have so much sales experience. I want to talk about the two for a second. So walk us through that. So, I mean, the, the sales experience I had before was very consultative type sales. So it was, you know, at making sure you're asking a lot of questions and finding a way to get people to reveal the pain to you. Mm -hmm. That way you can say, Hey, I, I have a solution to this. Cause it, it's my belief at the end of the day, like, Anytime you're making money, it's because you provided a service 100%. to someone. And so, you know, it's the amount of money that you have in the bank usually correlates to how valuable of a service that you provide. Yep. But you can't provide that service until you find the pain that you can solve. So I was good at that part. But when I learned more about like the reverse selling, uh, you know, go, going for no, supporting their autonomy, um, their, you know, uh, the like the perception of sale, when I started incorporating those, is when things started clicking a lot more for me and my my sales skills got a lot sharper in a very short amount of time from doing that the second part was you know i came into this program knowing that i'm like okay yes you have you know these years you know about 10 years worth of sales experience 
but you need to be a blank canvas. You need to just go in there and just completely adopt everything that is going to be in there. Um, even when it came down to some of like the mindset type stuff, um, you know, like the letter to yourself in 10 years or your vision board, things like that. I typically don't do that stuff. I, to be a hundred percent transparent, I, a lot of times I think that stuff is kind of like hippy dippy sort Pokey, of stuff. It's whatever. Just, it, sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's just not my vibe. But I came into this and I was like, you know what? Like you don't have a job right now. So you, you better just like, you just do what's told, be coachable and do what you're told right now. Even, even though, like I said earlier, I don't like being told what to do, but like for this, I was like, you just need to be a student and don't, this is someone who has, you have your clients, testimonials, other people that are in our group that have proof that it's worked your own proof of like your decades of experience. The other people who have decades of experience that you bring into the coaching program with us, like Ben, Dominic, like all this experience and it all points towards like this works just do it and so i was like okay don't try and be arrogant and think that you know more than them just be a student be coachable and be a blank canvas to absorb all this and i mean my results were instant really fast so, and and i and yeah. i can yeah i mean that's i told you off air i love working with you because of how coachable you are typically people with experience come with an ego right? That's, they, 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 they come together. You didn't have any ego, which is allowing you to really soar quickly. So let's break down the business model, what it looks like today. So uh, first off, from a lead generation perspective, what lead sources are you, are you going after? Uh, right now, pretty much just expired. Um, probably going to be starting incorporating uh, a little more certain prospecting into it. Got it. Okay. So walk us through like your typical day. So you're going after expired listings. What happens in the morning? Walk us through that, your prospecting schedule, um, and then we'll get into some of the the more tactical things. Yeah. So, I mean, right now, because I don't have, I'm still new, don't have a ton of business. I, good side of that is I have a lot of time to prospect. Um, so, I mean, I guess like the whole schedule of the day beginning to end is I'm up at 4.30. I'm leaving and on the way to the gym and I'm at the gym at 5.30, uh, wrap up around 6.30. And then for all the listeners out there, the most underrated thing in Brandon's program is the cold shower. Make sure you're taking the cold shower. That is, that's a little spice of life there. So, um, yeah. so, uh, so then, uh, you know, I'm with my role play partners from about seven fifteen until eight o'clock and then all of, and I've got a good group of guys. We're all based in Texas together and we all role play together. So then we, then I'll prospect from about eight to 11 or so. Uh, do some admin work, clean up all all that um, after I'm done with my calls. Um, and uh, from there, I'll, I'll, after that, a lot of it is either I'll, you know, work on my emails uh, that I'm sending out, follow up with people, um, like current leads and such, um, make sure I'm hitting all those people. And then by that time, it's, you know, I'll, I'll be back in the afternoon. If I don't have any appointments set, uh, then I'll just go back to calling people. Got it. I love it. So... Your give us like your, your typical week. Um, how many conversations will you typically have, which will result in roughly how many leads and, and how many listing opportunities are you able to generate on a weekly basis, roughly? Uh, I'm probably I'm probably going on at least one listing appointment per week. Um, yeah. Some some sometimes two. Uh, and that has been, that's been ramping up more and more as I'm just getting more comfortable. Like a lot of this stuff is just a learning curve with yep. the actual systems that you're using, um, like your dialer and where you're getting your data and how you're getting it and cleaning it. And so it takes a little, a little bit of learning curve there. And as I'm getting that, it's, it's ramping up more. Um, as far as conversations go, I'm probably getting somewhere between 40 to 50 conversations a week. Um. Hope, hoping to really ramp that up as well. I know I probably need to be having around 25 to 30 conversations a day. Um, and so that's really going to be my goal for uh, 2024 is just ramping up the volume that I'm doing. Yeah. At this point, I've got a really, really great follow-up system. Um, thanks to you, of course. So I've got this great follow-up system that you know anybody I'm putting into this funnel is going to go through the system and they're, they're going to be getting calls from me on Monday. Uh, maybe they'll get you know, a letter on Tuesday, on Wednesday, they're going to get an email from me Thursday, maybe I'll give them a break. And then Friday, I, they'll get either another text message or call for me. So I mean, these people, when they get into the lead follow up system, a lot of them are still 
getting some kind of correspondence from me on nearly a daily basis. Yeah. Um, so now that I've got all that in place, it's just, hey, crank up the volume and throw as much in there as you can, as long as it's a qualified lead. Yeah. So uh, to be fair, though, the 40 or 50 conversations you're having, again, you're, you're dealing with the bottom of funnel business, right. expiry listings, right? So the conversion with those in comparison to, let's call it a circle prospecting lead or an absentee owner is much higher, right? So the, the bulk of your conversations that you're talking about in the future will come from what we would call pipeline building business, right? right. So absentees for sell by owners, uh, downsizers, things of that nature, where you're having more conversations that might not lead to an appointment today, but we could fill the pipeline that turn into future appointments in the future. Right now, exactly. in the build, yeah, business building phase, you're, you're uh, essentially going after the low hanging fruit, right? So new, new to the business, you and I actually just had this conversation on a coaching call, I think uh, it was yesterday, in fact. You know, there's a lot of people that get into into the business. They start to jump into the deep end, start going after expired listings, and they're met with a lot of challenges emotionally, uh, mentally. You know, they're just met with so much uh, overwhelm. You know, how have you dealt with that as somebody that may be newer to the business? Because a lot of them fight, you know, imposter syndrome. You're competing with top agents, yet here you are setting listing appointments, going out there in a brand new market where you don't know anybody, you don't even know the market, and you're out there taking listings. I, to be honest, uh, I mean, I, you know, I've heard, I've heard a lot of people say it's like, you know, I just remember my why, and that, and that's why, you know, that's why I'm able to do it. other for other people. It may be that it's just, you know, maybe they have a good accountability system that. You know, pushes them forward. They have another team that they can lean on. To be honest, be honest, Brandon, I think it. I, for me, it's just something that's innate in me that it's just like I, I, I just go for it. I'm, I'm, I'm the type that I will jump out of a plane and build my parachute on the way down. Mm -hmm. It's like I would, I would just figure it out as I do it. Um, I like to get a certain, you know, I like to get some things in place where I'm like, okay, like let me get like a, some sort of a script in place or something like that, or, you know some idea of what i'm going to do but i'm like hey the only way i'm going to learn how to hit the ball is if i actually get up to the plate so it's just hey get just get your reps in and you have to understand that at first you are going to suck at at doing a thing you're you're not going to be good and you just have to accept that but the only way that you're going to not suck is if that you do something and then over time you'll stop being bad and then you'll be good and then when you're good you'll make money and so it's just hey the more calls i can get in in the shortest amount of time, the more reps I can get, then I'll, I'll, I'll be leaps and bounds ahead of the competition. And the way that I kind of think about it is it's like, you know, my, my team lead, uh, or other people on my team, you know, they're doing anywhere from five to $10 million of business per year. And for me, I'm like, okay, well, if I want to get to where they, where they're at, I don't need to do five to 10 million a year. I need to do, I need to do 10 to 20 million per year. I need, I need to short change that experience. And by doing yep. that, I have to get I have to get more reps in in a shorter shorter amount of time in order to catch up to where my competitors are because they've been doing this longer than me. So yeah. I I just know that's in there is that it's like okay well if I'm if I'm just going to sit on my hands and just you know like wait until everything is perfect before I make calls or before I do anything then I'm never I'm never going to succeed. I just you just have to do it. You just have to go for it. And so yeah, I just, it? go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, so those feelings like fear or hesitation or whatever it is, it's just like, like you, you don't have time for that. You yeah. The learning, throw it away. the learnings in the doing. And here's what I find interesting though, is you said at the beginning, you know, going through the mindset stuff, like, ah, I'm not, I don't know how bought in that you were to that. However, the way in which you're able to operate is because of the strength of the mindset you have. It's an interesting, you know, observation your mindset is so powerful that allows you to behave and act the way that you do um and so that's why i always tell people it's this 80 15 5 principle 80 percent of what we do is the mindset because our mindset's responsible for the action we take or we don't take so it's mindset 15 percent is our skills and the lowest part of success is actually the skills piece because if you do enough reps skills will come over time and it'll allow you to get results. So let's talk about skills. First, I want to talk about the phone. 
What are some things that you've learned that's helping you generate leads with people you have no idea who they are and they don't know who you are? How are you able, what are maybe one or two skills that you've learned over the last 90 days that helps you convert a stranger into a lead or into an appointment? Uh, I, I'd probably say the whole uh, the whole idea of supporting someone's autonomy, that whole idea is, that, that's been a game changer for me for me and so it's just throughout the course of a conversation i'm always just keeping it in my head to like almost reminding the client or the prospect that like hey this is your choice like you tell me if it makes sense for us to meet like hey do you and then also going for the no that's probably the second thing but like hey you tell me if it makes sense for us to meet hey i don't know if this makes sense or not or you know just things like that it's like leaving up to them to make them feel like they're the ones making the decision yeah it's not it's not me saying like hey well you know, if, if I if I get your whole your house sold in the next ninety days, you would you'd sign with me, right? And then, you know, customers be like, yeah, I mean, of course, like, duh, who wouldn't? But it's like, pe- like people are so accustomed to salespeople now that when they hear a question like that, they're just like, dude, like, go away. Go yeah. Away. So let me just talk but, about that real quick. Let's, yeah. let's just stick on that skill of autonomy. I believe it's funny you say that. I believe it's also the number one skill. You and I see that. Uh, eye to eye. And the reason for that is the number one issue with traditional sales approach is the uh, fact that we elicit the number one thing that keeps us from closing business, which is psychological reactants. It's the number one thing by far. And an untrained salesperson, when they talk the whole time, all they're doing is raising the reactants more and more and more and more and more until one of two things happens. Either the person just hangs up, they're over it, or they get they're, they're they're so resistant that the salesperson just uh, can't deal with it emotionally, and so what you're talking about is the is is the opposite of that. So if the kryptonite of salespeople is to uh, speak in a way that forces that 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 people feel as though they're being sold, taking their freedom to choose on their own is being taken away, then the opposite of that is to then just support their autonomy. So what you're talking about is giving the perception to the prospect that they're 100% in control of this. There's no reason for them to feel resistant. As a result of that, compliance goes up. And that's what you're finding, right? And so if the person doesn't feel threatened that they're in a corner being pressured by a high-pressure salesperson, then they're more apt to having that conversation. Is that what you that's what you found? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, like an an example of that would be like if if someone were to say, um, you know, if like a FISBO or something is saying, "Hey, well, you know, I'm I'm not using any agents. Like, I I'm trying to keep the most money in my pocket. I'm not using any agents." And then you support the autonomy by going, "Hey, understood. Uh, before I let you go, do you mind if I ask you a question?" Yeah, sure. Right there, you're supporting their autonomy to even or like you're getting permission before you even go forward. That's right. Uh, and then, uh, and then you go, yeah. Well, you know what? I mean, let's be honest. Like, you're not going to have a problem selling this market. But I mean, in the slim chance that 30, 60, 90 days go by, still haven't got what you're looking for. I mean, at that point, would you still be totally opposed to meeting with me to see if it would even make sense to give me a shot at earning your business? I mean, is that is that something that's totally off the table right now? Awesome. And then, and then right there, that's that's going for the no. That's so right. you're, you're giving you're giving them the choice, and then you're going for the no. So to where it's like. You know, I mean, you're you're still leaving it up to them, but it frames it a little bit softer, and it doesn't have that like salesiness where it's like you're basically forcing someone to say yes. Like, I mean, I just I just bought a car last week, and you know, when you're going through that process, it's like they're saying things where it's like you can't not say yes, but like you know that by saying yes, like everyone knows the trick that salespeople are like, oh, get them to say yes seven times, and that That's leads right. to a sale. And it's like, yeah, like I know that, but also like I'm not an idiot. Like I know what you're doing. That's right. So, you know you're being sold. It's a trigger. Right. It's like, ah, dude, this is so annoying. You just don't even feel right, you know? So right. I, I love it. So you just gave a great role play, great uh, example of how reverse selling might sound in a real world. Moving to the appointment, Tucker, are there... So we teach a six-part framework when it comes to that listing appointment, as you know. Which, which part of the listing presentation that you've learned do you find most beneficial for me uh i i would say it's how you're like framing 
the market, uh, like the the story of the market. Um, and this is probably going to go different for everyone. Like right. I'm I'm a I'm a huge like as I've kind of said before, like I'm a huge like investing and the markets nerd. So when I get to that portion, I can talk about the data and how things are moving, the supply and demand, and here's what's on the market, and that's how it's going to affect our pricing. Is everything all you know? The price of everything is the marriage between supply and demand. And so when I can go through that story, that's where I really kind of shine in mm. it. Um, so that that's that's the part that I like in the listing presentation um, and where I feel like it, it's a strength for me. Yeah, it allows you to to come across uh, and demonstrate your expertise in the marketplace uh, without telling them, yeah, I really know what I'm doing. No, we're not going to tell anybody anything. We're going to show people, right? I love it. So... You know, for for agents that are thinking about getting into the business or that are brand new into the business, they're filled with fear. They're just scared of the unknown. What's going to happen? You know, if you could just talk to all of them right now, what what advice maybe would could you leave people with? Maybe one or two pieces of advice that you think every new agent should know. Take action. Like I, that, that's probably the biggest thing. It's so maybe, maybe I guess two things here. One is participation. Um, so like my, my idol is Arnold Schwarzenegger. I, I love Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, and he's got the, he's got this quote where he says, you can't climb the ladders, the ladder of success with your hands in your pockets. And so that's like, if you want to succeed, you have to participate. The learning is in the doing. Um, you know, if, if you're in, you know, if anybody's watching this who's actually in the inner circle and in the coaching program, like you need you need to go to the coaching calls. You need to have accountability. You need to have a role play partner. You need to make the calls. You need to get go on listing presentations. You you have you have to do it. You have to participate. And if you're not, like I guarantee you someone else is and they're gonna eat your lunch all day. So that that's the first one is participation or I guess uh, as we call it, like the learning is in the doing. The the second piece of advice is probably like perfection is your enemy mm. um, or perfectionism is your enemy. A lot of times, you know, perfectionism is just, it's procrastination disguised as activity. Uh, so, you know, you're sitting there and you're making sure that all of your, you're, you're making sure you have the perfect script. And before you ever even have a phone call with someone, you're thinking about what are all the things that they're going to say to me and how am I going to respond to that situation? It's like, okay, well, you've spent, four weeks coming up with a perfect script and a thing to say, you've done all the trainings inside the inner circle. You know, you've gone through all the modules, but you still haven't made a call. Guess what? When you get on that phone, you're, you're still going to be bad. So, but I, I guarantee you, like if there's someone else who has not done any of the program yet, but they've made a thousand calls and they've had a hundred conversations, I guarantee you that person's going to outperform you. So just, I guess that goes back to participation, but like you just need to like, Get get a small framework, get something going, but like you just you just need to go do it. You you need you need to do it and don't try and make it perfect. It'll get better on its own over time as you get the reps in. Yeah, it's great advice, man. Phenomenal advice. So, you know, we're making this, I think, what, yeah, Thanksgiving week. And so as you look ahead in 2024, what's the goal for you? Uh I I would like to hit uh two hundred thousand in gross commissions. Um so that that's that's the goal. Um, I know I need to be prospecting about three hours a day in order to do that. I know how many conversations I need to have and how many deals I need to close uh, on a monthly basis. So as long as I stick that plan, I shouldn't have a problem hitting it. Love I've it. already got some pipeline built up for next year. So we're all going to say this. Started. I was going to say the same thing. So maybe we can have you back on the uh, podcast next Thanksgiving, uh, next Thanksgiving. So yeah. we've got a full year. Because that will be interesting. So now your first full year in the business, right? Going from November to November. Now that you know what you know with the skills that you have, with a pipeline that will manifest over the next 12 months, um, I have no doubt that you can accomplish that goal. I have no doubt. I think that, you know, um, with your talent, I've told you this, with your talent, with your mindset, with your work ethic, I mean, you you have a real opportunity in your market there in Texas to be to be amongst the greats, uh, and I truly mean that. So, like I told you off air, I enjoy working with you. You're super coachable. You do the work, and of course, you're getting the results. So, appreciate you jumping on the pod with us today, and uh, all that you've given to the audience. 